Welcome to Kirk Focus Friday, and uh, Tim Casares is our guest today. Tim is an assistant news director in Fort Myers, Florida. Tim, why don't you give us a little background of the stations where you work at? Sure, absolutely. So I am the assistant news director at uh, Waterman Broadcasting. Uh, we are uh, locally owned, independently owned, uh, which is very different than uh, many other television stations in the world these days. Um, we are located in Southwest Florida, based in Fort Myers, so we cover uh, six counties here uh, in the southwestern part portion of the state, two hours south of Tampa and two hours west of Miami. Our next TV market south of us is Savannah, Cuba, so uh, we're down at the end of the world here. Um, but we here at Waterman Broadcasting uh, operate NBC2 and ABC7. Uh, under a uh, dual license uh, situation here. Uh, but uh, two separate brands, two separate TV stations uh, operating here at full power uh, here in Southwest Florida. So that is, uh, and I'm in charge of two newsrooms uh, who produce 19 newscasts a day. Uh, we pr produce over 5,000 newscasts a year uh, coming out of this building. So a uh, very big operation. Uh, in a very growing community. Uh, I moved here in 2015 and we were market size 62. Uh, five years later here in 2020, well, I guess, yeah, six, I came in 2015, uh, technically six, uh, we are now market size 51. So we have uh, jumped 11, 11 TV markets in the span of a very short amount of time. So uh, growing community, growing TV station. And uh, for me, it's a very good place to be. Well, how did you get there? I, uh, I have some background with you, but uh, I'll let you tell uh, our folks uh, how you got there. Sure, absolutely. So I'll, I'll squeeze it all down very, very quickly. I graduated from Lindenwood College at that point. I'm in the, I was the last graduating class of Lindenwood College, that is now Lindenwood University, uh, based in St. Charles, Missouri, which is just outside of St. Louis. Uh, graduated from there and actually began working at KMOX Radio uh, before I left uh, Lindenwood. So I had a great opportunity to uh, be part-time and uh, do some producing and reporting work at that. Uh, that morphed over into television land and I wound up working at uh, KMOV TV in St. Louis, which is the CBS affiliate. And uh, a one day a week job that was not supposed to lead to anything led to the first decade of my career, uh, which is always uh, one of the stories I love telling college students is that you never know you never know when something with an internship or a, you know, entry level job will turn into something. Uh, I was an intern at KMOV. They knew me. They needed somebody for one day a week. And that one day a week, you get in there, you show what you can do, and all sorts of things can happen. So I wound up at uh, KMOV TV for the first decade of my career as a sports producer. I uh, got to cover Super Bowls and World Series and Stanley Cups and all kinds of fun stuff like that, and uh, did a lot of a lot of good things uh, in the sports world. But um, as most of you know, local sports or local TV sports uh, is a dwindling venture. So I uh, left that, uh, did some communications work, a little PR, a little uh, social media work at the very early stages of what Facebook has has become for businesses. Uh, did some work on that, and wound up uh, getting an offer to come back to do news at KMOV, and I took the opportunity to do that. But one of the things that I wanted when I took that job was I wanted to have some uh, grooming to become management, uh, to help manage a TV station at some point in my career. Uh, and I had the opportunity. I showed my medal uh, doing uh, news producing, had the opportunity to become an executive producer at KMOV, um, helped uh, guide the station through the Ferguson stuff uh, that happened there. Uh, then some opportunities arose and had the opportunity to move up to become assistant news director here at Waterman Broadcasting uh, in Southwest Florida. And it has been a great experience thus far and uh, tremendously rewarding. And I've managed to cover hurricanes and pandemics. And uh, now we're in the midst of wildfires too right now simultaneously. So uh, we have all sorts of fun stuff going on here in Florida. Well, most of the people you hire there are, are often in their second, uh, third jobs. Occasionally, you get some people right out of college. Uh, what suggestions do you have um, for them uh, for getting an entry-level job? Sure, absolutely. And, you know, for us, you know, at the reporting level that we're usually stopped to, 
Um, for reporters, uh, usually you're going to a little bit of a smaller market. Um, we hire from all over the country. Uh, we're, we hire out of places like Panama City, Florida. We hire out of places like uh, Macon, Georgia, uh, Columbus, Georgia, uh, you know, but we also go up into the upper Midwest and, and Northeast into a number of the smaller markets there uh, to find talent for um, reporters and anchors uh, and some of those on-air positions. But for producers and digital, uh, we do hire straight out of college and we do a lot of training here. Uh, what we look for, uh, for somebody coming directly out of college to us in a producer or a uh, digital role, is we, we are looking for people who uh, obviously want to do it, uh, people who are gung-ho on, on wanting to learn a craft and wanting to learn what we do uh, on a daily basis and how to do their job. And, and we understand that you're coming to us uh, with minimal experience. Uh, hopefully you have gotten some of that experience uh, either working in internships or, or at the college where you're working. Uh, different college programs are at different levels with us. We understand um, you know, some, some of what some schools are able to do versus other schools. And, and it, we're not really prejudiced as far as, you know, we only want students from a certain school. Um, but we also do have, you know, good relationships with certain schools too, that we know that if their students generally, each student is individual, but we know generally that some of those students are learning the right things and have the right attitudes. And, uh, you know, we, it's a relationship business. Uh, we talk to advisors, we talk to professors, we talk to the people who know uh, you as a student and understand what kind of a person you are and uh, what kind of abilities you might have. And, and frankly, the two things I'm looking for as someone who's hiring, uh, and these sound very simplistic, but they're really not, is are you smart, are you intelligent, and are you coachable? If you have those two things, I can work with you. And our, and our company can work with you. Um, but, you know, I can't coach, I really can't coach either one of those two things. Uh, you know, you gotta be able to take the coaching and, and put it into work. And that's what we're willing to do. We have the patience for it here. Uh, we're very lucky in that. Um, you know, the Watermans have always been very good about understanding their role within the, the television world. And they understand that we are a bit of a teaching, inst a teaching institution. And uh, we invest in our people that way. We invest in making sure that all of our staff is coached up in not only how to do their job, but how to do their job at a high level. So when we talk about, um, you know, that first step, the, the thing you need to show is that you want it that you really want the job, that it's not just, eh, maybe it's okay. That's the first part. And then you have to show an eagerness and, and receptiveness to the coaching that we give you. How has the pandemic changed the hiring process? So it used to be in the grand old days of five months ago uh, that we, you know, we would fly people in. We would, we, you know, we would bring you down here. Um, there's, a, there's an old Florida joke about the further south you go, the further north you are. And we're really not the south here. Uh, we, we very much more are a Midwest slash Northeast community uh, here, even though we're in Southwest Florida. And you know the, the people who are here are very much people who uh, want to look you in the eye, want to shake your hand, want to get a good sense of who you are, much more than just can you do the job. Um, so you know, it, how we've changed our hiring is that we have, you know, gone from uh, very much, you know, that face-to-face -face contact to now it's a lot of Zooms, a lot of Skypes, a lot of, uh, you know, Google uh, meetups, uh, those sorts of things to try to get a sense. Um, you know, at the, at the end, we can work around that, um, but, you know, it's a little different as far as that goes. Um, but we also aren't untouched like other companies uh, within the television and digital space. Uh, you know, times, of, times are tight. Advertisers disappeared for the month of April. Uh, I, I won't, share too many, won't share too many numbers, but uh, it was an ugly month uh, as far as how much revenue was coming into the company. So that has adjusted, you know, how many people we are hiring, uh, how many people, uh, you know, are we, are we keeping retention-wise. Um, and I, I think every company right now is, is running a much, with a much tighter belt than they were two, three, four months ago. Well, if a student were looking for a job and were coming to you, what, what, what would make them stand out from the rest of the crowd? For me, it's, it's eagerness. It's eagerness to really want to do the job. 
Um, and, you know, I want to hear that you want to grow as a person. I absolutely do. Uh, we're about growth here. Um, I love hiring people and watching them, you know, move into higher positions and higher profiles within the country, company. That's my favorite thing about uh, Waterman Broadcasting because we do that. We, we encourage that. Um, you know, we also realize where we are, you know, within the TV world too. You know, in Mark 51, you're kind of a mid-major. So you understand that eventually the, the people I hire are going to break my heart here a little bit and they're going to go to Miami and they're going to go to Tampa and they're going to go to Houston and all these wonderful places and they're great places. Um, but at some point they're going to kind of break my heart on that a little bit. So understanding that, you know, we, are, we understand that we are a pipeline. Um, and, and we need to, you know, take care of you. So bringing it back all the way to the beginning, you know, we want to see that you have an end goal in mind. That being said, we also want to see that you want to do the job that we're hiring for right now. Um, you know, if you want to be hired, if you want to be a reporter, it's not good for us as an organization to say, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to come in and do digital and I'll kind of be okay at it. And at some point I'd really like to be a reporter. So can you do that for me? As a business, that doesn't really work for us because we're hiring somebody to, to do a very specific position. We offer ways to increase in that position and, and move up in that position, but we're hiring you for a job that we need you to be very effective at right now. Um, you know, all of these jobs that you're applying for now, everyone understands that this is probably not the last job you will ever have in your career. Um, we, all, we all are very aware of that. but. We need, the, we need the, the functions of that job to be done at a high level. So we're looking for people who can do the job right now and want to do it at a very high level. Okay, well, um, I'm sure we have some questions from the uh, students around the line today. And um, um, we've got uh, both uh, Benny and Aaron on. And if you have anything, be sure to unmute your uh, microphone and ask him whatever you need to ask. So like, well, so you said that where you're from is kind of like in the middle, like 50s regarding like local news rankings, you would say? Yeah, as far as market, as TV market size, Mar yes. I, I would say that uh, as far as how this station performs and, you know, one of the, one of the things that I hear from a lot of students coming out is, you know, is market 70 better than market 90? And I, and I don't know which ones, which cities those are. I'm just kind of picking randomly. But I would tell you in that first job, it is much more important to work for a, a company that is going to teach and train than it is to worry about the market size. You know, money is money, and I understand that. You always want to get the most money that you can, but you will be much better off in your career going to market 90 for $1,000 less for a company that's going to work with you and train you and build you uh, than you would be going to market 70 and they, 70 and they just throw you to the wolves. Um, going somewhere where it's a good environment, a good healthy environment uh, that teaches training, that, that wants to work with you, to wants, who wants to make you better, is so much more important right now in this world than going somewhere for the extra thousand dollars. That extra thousand dollars in 2020 will mean nothing in 2030. The experience you get in 2020 will help you wildly in 2030. Right, and you believe that, but starting off at these smaller size markets is probably much, it could be a lot easier for a lot of people coming out of college than jumping straight to places like, you know, Philadelphia, New York City, Los Angeles, Atlanta, where it's like big size markets, because then you could start small and then you could try to find your way to get up. Well, and, and I will be, I'll be a little bit of a hypocrite if I said that, you, I mean, I start. I went straight to market. I think St. Louis was 19 at that point. So, I mean, I started, I started in market 19 and I, I got very lucky. I, I, I mean, I made some of my luck, but don't get me wrong. I got, I got a little lucky too. Um, you know, the, the thing is, is for that point at that time, I had a lot of good mentors at KMOB that were able to teach me the things I didn't know. And that's always the very dangerous thing leaving college is, you know, you walk out and you're like, all right, I got this degree. I, you know, I was, I was probably the top dog in my communications department and my, you know, my classes. I was, I was probably all these things. I got this all figured out. And what you quickly realize is that you don't have this all figured out. What you have is a base to start figuring it out. 
Um, and that's not to that's not to discourage anybody. It's just the, the what college and universities isolate you from are the business dynamics of that are at play. Um, and you, and frankly, you need to get in there and get your get your knuckles dirty a little bit to figure out why where you fit into that world. Um, you know, the idea of all this, of course, is is to make a living. Uh, in some cases, make a good living, and you know, try to build a career out of this. Um, you know, it is really a, the first couple of years. If I could go back and and talk to twenty one year old Tim, I would tell you make sure you're getting yourself to a place that's going to help you and train you. Uh, all of those, all of those things I learned in the first couple of years of my career, it still come into play all these years later. Um, you know, finding, finding a place that's going to mentor you really going to work with you, going to train you. Um, your training never stops. I still do training. You know, I'm, I'm 44 now. I graduated in 1997. It's 23 years. I'm still training myself because there are things, the cool part about what we do in this business is that it's ever evolving. Uh, as soon as you stop evolving, you're dead. Um, you know, how, how we do things, the way we do things. Nobody six months ago knew Zoom. Now we do Zoom all the time. Nobody, nobody said, okay, you got to throw every reporter out of your building and figure out how to get video and television on the air every day. 19 newscasts a day. Well, guess what? Now I know how to do it. Um, you know, these... These things are, are so important, and these lessons that you can learn in the first couple of years of your career, um, to finding the place that's gonna teach and train is so important. Mm -hmm. And you did mention before how you were involved in sports media at one point. Yes. What was like your overall like experience from that? Like, did you do a lot of like play-by-play? -play? Did you do like, um, like reporting, like right on the spot for, for whatever sports teams or sport, sporting events? How did that work? Sure. So I did. Um, I was very blessed at Lindenwood. We, we were able to do a lot of play by play. I probably I probably called boy, probably between 75 and 100 games before I ever left college uh, between radio and television. Uh, I was a very, very much able to, you know, it was high school football, uh, high school basketball, a little high school baseball. Uh, you know, college football and college basketball, college baseball. I was able to do all those things uh, while still in college on a 25,000 watt radio station. I was going to the entire market. So that was very, that was a very good opportunity for me. Um, I was able to do it from that side of things. I did it from the reporting side of things at Camel X. Uh, you know, I was in there covering athletes, you know, covering uh, at that time the Rams were there, the Blues and Cardinals were still playing. And, you know, I mean, that was at the time of Mark McGuire's the height of all that. Um, so I was able, I mean, I was in those locker rooms. I was in those scrums. I was able to watch, um, you know, really, really good reporters, uh, able to, able to do all those stories. Uh, and then from the producing aspect, I've, I've done game, I've done, uh, you know, uh, game broadcasts. I've produced, uh, you know, post-game shows, pre-game shows, uh, the, you know, the normal sports cast within local TV, excuse me, local TV. So I, I have been able to do, uh, I've been able to touch a whole bunch of different things uh, doing sports. Right. And that's kind of like the field that I want to go into as well. And like a good question to bring up is like, this is coming from like a new, cause I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Albany actually. Sure. And coming from like a New York based um, question, you know, would it be easier like right out of college to possibly get an opportunity when it comes to sports media at the local news level where you do coverage of, you know, high school teams, maybe even college teams, or, you know, possibly looking for an internship or a job with somewhere like Yes Network, where you're immediately doing coverage for like the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Nets, so that you can even jump right ahead into possibly doing coverage and even play-by-play -play reporting for professional sports teams. Well, what's, what's the end goal? And, and, and I will tell you, this is, this is the part that I have learned through the years uh, about career management. And, you know, all of you are on career on step one of career management here but begin with the end in mind uh what what is the ultimate goal is it is it to be the the play-by-play -play voice of the new york yankees is it to be you know producing sunday after sunday night football is it to uh you know be be a segment producer is it to be a talk show producer you know what is that goal um and if that goal is to be the play-by-play -play voice of the new york yankees I would tell you your first step should be getting any play-by-play -play job in the country that uh, that you can go get. 
uh, that that would be because reps are more important than hoping and praying that you that you you know you get in at Yes Network as an intern and you think you'll work your way up through Yes. The realities of that are are very slim. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's a matter of what path you want to get on. It doesn't mean you can't change paths midstream, but it does mean that you know you are building the things you need to help build your career out. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And of course, you think about all the big names like, you know, like the Michael K's of the world, the Mike Breen's, Jim Nance, Joe Bucks, like, of course, you know, they definitely had to start at a much lower level of doing like high school, college play by play, by play and then, you know, building their ways up to, you know, calling the World Series and the Super Bowl. So it definitely, it takes a process. And a lot of these people, you know, they're middle-aged at this point. Like, well, someone like Joe Buck, who's actually very fortunate because his father was in the industry. And I remember, like, I heard that he was calling play-by-play in his 20s. But, like, most people, you know, they definitely, it takes a long time for them to get meet that end goal, as you've mentioned. <laughs> it does. And, you know, one of the realities of the sports side of the business is that, you know, there, there are a hundred people standing in line to take Joe Buck's job who are very capable of it. Yeah. Um, you know, Joe, and Joe is among the best in the business. Oh, he is. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, at, at the end of the day, the reason Joe Buck is there, Joe Buck got in, you know, because he, he had, he had a, a number of really good connections. What's kept him around is he's really good and he works very hard at his craft. And what you have the ability to do is to work very hard at your craft. Um, you know, some of those other things, you know, it's a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work and the, you know, it sounds all very cliche, but it's all very true. Um, you know, it, it's making sure that you're doing the things and getting the reps of what you want to do in the future as soon as you possibly can. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, Tim, we thank you for being with us today. Um, if uh, any students are interested <clears throat> down the road of uh, going to work for you, uh, how would they contact, uh, uh, contact your station? Abs absolutely. So a um, couple things. Obviously, we all have the websites and the apps. Uh, NBC-2.com. Uh, remember the dash. There's a number of NBC2s out there. Uh, also, ABC-7.com uh, is our other site for the ABC station. Uh, look for Southwest Florida if you want to type in any of those things too. Uh, you know we have we have our job postings uh, on both of those sites. Um, as, of course, if you want to reach out to me personally, I you know I am always out there for MBS students. Um, I am always looking for people. I'm always looking to uh, looking for bright, energetic people uh, who who want an opportunity to learn and and to grow. Uh, and that's that's always what we're looking for. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.